Hey folks, if you've used any of my single line fonts, you know that they come in two versions. Both of them are made from the same work file, where each stroke is a single line from the start point, which is this little green arrow, to the end point, the little red arrow. The gray area you see is not part of the character. Font Creator, the program I work in, adds that just to make your strokes easier to see. I export two versions so that these are usable in as many programs as possible. One has the number one in the name. This is the true single line version, but most programs can't use that version because the program tries to close the shape. It puts a straight line between the start point and the end point of every stroke, so you end up with these weird blocky filled shapes. We'll look at those closer in a minute. The other version has the number two in the name. I call this the hairline version. It's technically an outline font, but the outline is microscopically thin. If you can't really see the letters here, don't worry, neither can I. Heck, in some programs, these fonts are completely invisible until you apply a stroke. With the number two version, when you use it with a stylus, like a Glowforge laser engraving tool or this Cricut Joy with a pen, it will go from the start point to the end point and then back up to the start point for each letter. And I know some folks don't like that they need to use the double stroke version because it can make their lines heavier. And let's take a look at some examples written with single line versus double line. First up is Cricut's 0.4 millimeter sketch pen. You can see the double is a little bit heavier. Next is a plain old Sharpie fine point. The double isn't much heavier, but the dots of ink at the ends of each stroke are way heavier in the double. Those dots are gonna happen with any felt tip pen because the pen is pausing for a moment and more ink seeps from the pen into the paper. Last is the fine point of a Tombow dual brush marker. This marker gave me much smaller ink dots at the ends of each stroke, and you can really see the difference in weight between the single and double strokes. So let's look at how you use the actual single line version of my sketch fonts here in Adobe Illustrator and make designs where each line is drawn only once. Your Illustrator may look a little different because I'm on an older version, CS 5.5. First, here are the two versions of the font side by side. On the left is Spicy Sketcher 1, the single line version. On the right is Spicy Sketcher 2, the hairline version. For both of them, we're going to turn off any fill and apply a stroke so we can really see what we're working with. And here you can see why version one always shows as filled in. Most programs prefer a vector shape to be completely closed, so it's drawing a straight path between the start point and the end point. Not what we want, but we can work with it. I'll clear out the hairline version so we can concentrate on the single line version. First, I'm going to convert the text to vector outlines so we can make our modifications. To do that, go to the object menu, select expand, and then click OK. Once your text is in vector format, we can get rid of the extra connecting line. We're basically gonna break open the shape right where the line is. For this, we'll use the scissors tool. In most versions of Illustrator, it lives under the eraser tool. Click anywhere on that straight line and it creates two new nodes. One is your new start point and one is your new end point. You can select both, then hit your delete key to clear them out. If a letter has more than one stroke, you'll need to perform this same action for each stroke. We'll do the big shape here first. Same steps as before. With the scissors tool, click on the straight line you wanna remove. Select those new nodes and delete them. Straight or nearly straight lines might be a little harder because that additional line connecting the start and end points will overlap. To get a better idea of which part of the shape you want to break open, you can move one of the nodes. If you use your arrow keys to move a node, you can then use the opposite arrow key when you're done, putting that node right back where you found it. Here, I'll arrow down 10 times. Now you can see the full outline. The curved stroke is the one we want to keep, and the straight line connecting the start and end points needs to go. So same process as before. Choose the scissors, click on that straight line, then delete the two new nodes it created. Now you can move the end of the stroke back where it was before. For me, that means arrow up 10 times. 
Once all of your shapes are split and you've just got single strokes left, you can save your text as an SVG file using your usual settings. File, Save As, and then choose SVG. I just use Illustrator's default settings here. Now I can bring that design into any program that takes SVG files and the text is ready to go. Here I've uploaded the SVG file into Cricut Design Space to test it out. Set it for drawing with your pen tool and it's good to go. So now you may ask, isn't it easier to just type out text with the hairline version directly in my machine's software? And yeah, it is. But if you want true single line strokes for the text in your design, whether you're using sketch pens or a foil quill or scoring with a laser, this is a fast and easy way to build text and then import it. And if you're building a single line design in another program anyway, like if you're using other decorative elements, then it's just a few extra clicks to have true single line text to go along with your design. I hope this helps open up my single line fonts for even more uses. The spicy sketcher font that I used for all of the examples in this video is a freebie at my website. Check the link in the description below. And thanks for watching, nerds. May the fonts be with you.